Hello, thanks for coming here. I'm Elahe Crockett. I'm a faculty at the Department of Medicine. And today I'm going to talk about art and medicine, a symbiotic relationship. That's how I see it. And I'll share some of my experience. So this is just uh, that my background is in human anatomy and pathology. And um, I have, as far as my uh, research is in inflammation and tissue injury, and also I have formal training in art and design. So art, when we talk about art, we are talking about various form of art, visual, music, and performance art, crafts, and design. I specifically will focus on visual art for my experience. In general, art is expression of human experience, either in realistic or imaginative uh, form, and also is a tool for communication. So artists and scientists, either they work independently or they work together collaboratively. One of the well-known artists that we know is Leonardo da Vinci. And everybody is familiar with Mona Lisa and the Last uh, Supper. One of the, and we know uh, that not only he was an artist, but also he was an inventor, a scientist, and engineer. One of the artists or uh, the physician from our generation is Joseph Wilder, who describes himself as a surgeon athletes and painter. And uh, in the medical community, probably everybody is familiar with this um, painting by Joseph Wilder. As far as expression, this is done by a student, art student here at MSU, expressing her uh, illness. And when I look at this, image, I said, what are you trying to say here? And she said to me that this is when she gets her migraine uh, attack. And her name is Katie um, uh, says, um, Sesniak, uh, an art student. And when you look at this picture, immediately you feel that pain that she was going through. She said when she gets migraine, she has this um, um, like stars of uh, light that hitting her head and she's in so much pain that she doesn't want to look open her eye. In fact, the original painting is back there. Later on, you can look at it. This is another two paintings um, by a friend of mine that she goes, to, uh, she has some anxiety and depression. I encourage her to do painting and as a way of to cope with, um, with anxiety. And here she's expressing the flower when she's very happy and she's sitting by the swimming pool and enjoying the day. And the day that she's depressed, she says the um, flower even is crying. So this is when she's sad and this is when she's happy, expressing her feelings through the art. Here, as far as art and medicine, for me, art and medicine and science can be an inspiration for artists to generate art. So it inspires, and I have some <coughs> example of that that I will share with you. And also, art really serve as a form of meditations um, for mindfulness, for me to relax and be in peace and focus on the project or the um, grants or research that I am doing. This is an example of inspiration by science when I was in the Department of Surgery and I was writing grants about gene therapy. So I came up with this idea, how about if we put the gene into the suture and so as surgeon is doing uh, suturing, we deliver the gene to the uh, human body. And the original work is back there, it's a small work uh, which I was inspired by uh, the grant that I wrote. This one is another inspiration by science and uh, the original work is back there and it's called Light, uh, Life, Light and Time. What I think of science or life 
that life depends on the energy and that energy comes from the sun, from the light for us. And uh, so as a scientist and as a physician, we work hard to make life longer, but that life has a time and that time is in our DNA and you can see here and this represent the time that we have for life. But also as a scientist I say this is a time that uh, that scientists can um, encode the DNA to make um, living animals and as you see here the DNA has been nicked and is encoding wings of a butterfly. You can see that in the back. This is another art that I was, um, when I was working on my first grant that I was writing to NIH, I was so much under stress that I would sit and write for maybe 15 hours or so. Sometimes if the stress was so much, then I would go and take, and I had this sculpture there and I gilded this. So this is Bacchus that it was gilded, so it always reminded me of my first NIH grant that I wrote. <laughs> This was another, uh, it's called Serenity, and I generated this during a time that it was very, very difficult time for my academic, actually. Um, after three years of uh, developing a research um, and um, graduate study and so on, because of the budget and change of the chair, the direction changed, so then they dropped and cut the budget to my program. So I was very depressed. So I was encouraged by my husband to do some art. So I started to do something very, very peaceful so at least I can focus on other things to write grants and uh, um, find another uh, venue for that. So this is Serenity and it is in clay. This is another um, oil painting. Again, you see al always Art for me has to be in a very relaxed form, relaxing form and uh, mood. So this is a, an image oil painting of my daughter uh, during that time that I was trying to make the serenity, then I did this painting. So those were my experience, but also art has a healing power that has been used as a mode of expression, communication, or therapy, for example, for autism. I, I noticed one person in the community is from the autism, and they use that art uh, for therapy and for communication. You can see here is a collage of the artwork which was done by Grant because he had um, compulsive tearing of the paper, so then they uh, helped him and they made the art. There are many healing programs throughout the country. I have just put few of them here. These are an example of that. <coughs> this is from University of Michigan. And at, university, at our university, MSU, a few years also, we had the music therapy, which unfortunately, that one was cut too. And uh, we don't have it, but hopefully we'll get it again. This is uh, another example. I put this here. This is Mindy Al Alper. She was diagnosed with autism and she has severe anxiety and depression. So she was using art as a way of communication. And uh, she has uh, a lot of drawings um, she has. But um, the most interesting thing is that her life recently was um, brought into a documentary by Frank Stiffel and that received the Academy Award, Oscar Award for 2018. So these are just examples to see how art has helped other people to cope with the uh, uh, problems that they have. This is the, uh, just act to acknowledge, thank to Devon that put this together, but also I want to mention that really the person brought me together with Duman was Dr. Suresh Mukherjee, the chair of radiology, um, who facilitated my meeting with, um, with her and then a few other people, Nancy, my assistant, thank you to her. She always gives nice advice and helped me putting this together. And of course, my daughter always was my uh, uh, model. And my husband, who has been the 
driving force actually I focus on my art and so on and my former mentor Dr. Uh, Wayne Smith and uh, this time I would like to thank you for your attention and then later on you can look at the original in the back. Thank you.